Happy New Year! I wish you had a wonderful holiday. I had a great time with my family visiting Vancouver. I took a photo there and did a painting out of it. But today I want to show you how I make this painting look a bit more exciting. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. It's 2023 and I am glad you're still here watching my video. So before I talk about anything else, I really want to let you know just how grateful I am. Just the other day, I went to a local cafe with my wife and someone actually recognized me. She told me that my video had helped her through the pandemic. I was extremely humbled by it. To know that something I made from my garage to now my tiny house studio help someone. This really motivates me to create more content. So once again, thank you and let's have a wonderful 2023 together. Okay, back to watercolor. This painting was created the past weekend for my Patreon group. I figure I haven't painted a street scenery for quite a while, so I did a one hour live demo for the students. This was painted from a photo I took during our visit to downtown Vancouver over Christmas break. We had a wonderful time there. It was very quiet because many stores are closed, so it's not the usual hustle and bustle in the downtown area. Anyways, this is Georgia Street near the famous Fairmount Hotel Vancouver. It was a dry overcast morning when I took the photo, so that's what I painted. I left the painting on the easel because that's usually what I do. This helps me to revisit my painting and see if there's anything else I can do to make the painting better. After a couple of hours, I felt the painting look a little bit bland, so I decided to take a risk and paint some reflections on the road. Lo and behold, it looks a lot more interesting. While it didn't change the overall look of the painting, adding a wet surface creates a new surface material in the scene, thus making it more interesting and engaging to look at. So what I'm going to do today is to share the quick process of the demo and also share how I added the reflections after the initial painting session is finished. Okay, let's take a quick trip to Vancouver. Okay, so let's take a look at the process of this painting. So we start off with a very simple line drawing. I use a doll 4B pencil. And when I'm doing the line drawing, I try not to lift my pencil too often. I often tell students that your drawing habit is going to carry over to your painting habit. So if you try to lift your pencil a lot, you might unconsciously carry that habit over and that will result in a lot of different little broken brush strokes and that's not something you want so keep the line flowing keep your train of thought connected and that's going to help you to connect your shapes when you're starting to paint and now i switch to a mechanical pencil and reinforce some of the drawings, specifically some of the essence of the picture. Because you don't need to draw everything you see from the photo, you just need some points to help you know where things are. Now you might notice that the figures are a little bit lower than the horizon line, and that is because I was sitting in a minivan when I took this photo, so my horizon is a little bit higher than the people walking on the street. So that is why the figures are a little bit lower. So after you establish the vanishing point and the horizon, everything should follow the perspective that you set for this painting. So now I clean up the line work a little bit. And before I start painting, I use a little bit of masking fluid pen. This helps me to preserve some of the highlight. For example, the headlight of the car and the signal light. Now you can add those highlight back with gouache later on, but I personally feel masking fluid gives me a cleaner result compared to white gouache. Because sometimes even if I use white gouache, it's still not as clean and white as I want it to be. So I did a quick wash for the sky. And even though the sky is very light, I still want to give it a little bit of the tone. 
so I mix a very watery, cool gray for the sky. And before the sky is completely dry, I add some cloud in, wet onto wet. There is some cloud in the photo as well. They're just very fainted. So when I do this wet onto wet, it will create some soft clouds. And when they are dry, they're going to fade back quite a bit. And I continue the wash down with a little bit warmer gray for the road. And because I apply mask and foil already, I don't need to worry. I can just paint over that. And now I'm using a damp brush to went ahead and get a little bit of the reflection of the headlight. So by using a damp brush, I can pick up a little bit of paint before it is dry. Now continue to the second wash. So right now I'm mixing two different grays, one a little bit warmer on the left and one a little bit cooler on the right. But the basic color that I use are the same, which is just burnt umber and cobalt blue. So I'm painting the Fairmount Hotel Vancouver on the left. And it's very obvious that it is a warmer gray. And the skyscraper on the back is a cooler gray. But they are similar in value, so I just connect them together. So we can separate a little bit with different color, but also connect them because they are similar value. And that's a good way to simplify the painting. Spray a little bit of water to loosen up the shape. Give it just a little bit of texture. And now as I come down, I slow down just a little bit, preserve some highlights on the windshield and a few details in the back. Now before the wash is dry, I went ahead and paint a little bit of dark value on it. So the architectural details, some trees in the front, and now I'm also adding in the windows. I'm not counting how many floors in the building. So I just went ahead and do some really quick marks. And because I do this wet onto wet, those detail will be soft. And that's something that I want. I don't want anything to be really sharp at this stage. We can do that when we're adding darker values. But for now, I just want to make this wash looks a little bit richer, looks a little bit more interesting without making it over complicated. So I connect the shape to the right so that we can have two separate shapes on the left and on the right. And we bridge the shape with the mountain in the back and eventually with the cars on the street. Now doing the signals and add those red signal light. Continue the shape. Now painting the buildings on the right is a little bit redder, so I add some burnt sienna. But they are just different variations of gray. It is an overcast day, so the colors are not saturated at all. Now I continue the wash, connect to the figures and the cars in the back. And again, same thing here, I added some dark values in the wash on the right before it is dry so we can have some soft details so that you can kind of make out there's something there but they are not so in your face add the tree branches now i start to paint the car this is probably our main car so I spend just a little bit more time. And again, the masking fluid helps me to preserve the headlight. And as you can see, we already established the major shape of the painting, which is all the buildings and connect that to the figures. And also some of the minor shapes like those cars on the street.
adding some details to the skyscraper and now that the wash is pretty much dry I can start to painting some darker shapes and start to define some of the details but again I don't want to go overboard on those just a little bit of hint so I am mostly a loose painter you can probably tell by now not because I don't like hyper realistic painting actually I admire a lot of those artists because of their patience and their attention to details and their persistence but personally I'm just not able to do that so I keep my painting loose and sometimes I see students make this sort of mistake that they try to paint loose but when it comes to detail they try to do too many details and they try their best to make the detail look very accurate and that start to create this inconsistent in their painting because most of the time when your painting has very realistic details then the viewer is going to expect the whole painting is going to be consistent with that so if you want to paint a loose painting then keep your detail loose as well just a little bit of hint and then you can move on so now I start to paint the second wash on the car to make some darker values so the front of the car and the wheel and the side of the car and also the occluded shadow from the car and now I added a little bit of the warm colors around the headlight so we can get this warm glow that's actually going to create a nice effect some quick details in the distance and also the signal lights adding some street lights and the detail the metal pole that holds the signal light And also give it another wash, another layer for the building on the right. So dry brush a little bit to paint that dry trees on the street. So starting to paint the figures, the figures are all wearing black, so they are very simple to paint. Just watch out for the proportion, don't make the head too big. And I feel like the road is still a little bit too light, so I do a glaze over. Because again, watercolor dry lighter, so when it looks just right, when you first put down the wash, it can actually become too light when it's dry so I did another layer on the road and now I'm just going to use paper towel to lift some of the paint up before it's dry to hint that dull reflections on the street and now I start to remove the masking fluid and as you can see those highlights look really really bright really bright and clean especially the headlight with that warm glow around the highlight it creates a very nice lighting effect so adding just a little bit more detail and the initial painting is finished and that's about an hour of demo for my patreon group and I did the job, I recreate what I see in the photo but again after a few hours I thought I want to make this painting look a little bit more interesting so now after the painting is completely dry I am planning to put some reflections on the road to make the road wet now I did a value study of this painting so I'm just going to use that for a test so I pre-wet the area that I'm going to put the reflection on and just make some dark color and drop those in and because I paint tilted 
the paint will naturally flow down. Live for the reflection. And I think it looks good overall, so I am going to go ahead and add the reflection in my finished painting. So I pre wet the area that I want the reflection. But I also try to skip around and paint around the reflection of the headlight. And the reflection on the west tree is usually a little bit sharper, especially the light part. So after I pre-wet the area, I start to drop in some darker paints and again let them flow down naturally. And that creates a very nice looking convincing reflection. Just pay attention to the shape of the reflection. They should mirror what's going on above the ground. And we also want to make sure there is a light reflection in the middle because of the sky. So the reflection of the car in the distance, I'll make them just a little bit shorter. And the reflection of the main car. And again, I try to preserve the reflection of the headlight. And the same concept as the headlight I painted earlier, I painted some warm color around it. So it has this warm glow around the highlight. And that little bit of detail is a great way to show the visual language of the car reflection. Adding some more dark underneath the car and the front grille. That will also help to push the depth even more. So the car in the front, they really pops out and everything else behind it got pushed back. So we establish more depth as well. Some more darker reflection to the car on the left. And I know painting a rainy street scenery in Vancouver is almost a cliche now, but a rainy weather in Pacific Northwest is such a iconic scene. So that's why I decided to make the street wet. And it's hard not to think about the master Joseph Spukvich when you're painting a rainy street scenery. But hopefully in a small way, I can try to do something a little bit different. But anyways, I really like how the painting turns out after I add the reflection. It just feels a little bit more dynamic. And by introducing another surface texture, it makes the painting more interesting to look at. So I'm pretty happy with my decision to work on the painting and add something after it is dry. So just a few steps that turn a, a little bit bland looking street scenery into something a little bit more interesting and exciting to look at. So if you happen to have some painting of a overcast day scenery, maybe you can try this out and see if that will breathe some new life into your paintings. I hope you find that interesting. Even though we are using a photo reference to paint, you are not bound by it. If there's anything you can do to make the painting more interesting, whether it's to add more or remove a certain element, I encourage you to do so. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I'm still quite busy with my day job, so for the first few months of 2023, I will not likely able to upload new videos very consistently. However, I'm planning some big things this year, so be on the lookout for those. I'm Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Wish you have a great 2023. Take care, and I'll see you next time.